Hi, I'm uh, Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to talk about a fairly tough STEMI uh, that we did recently. Only have the uh, balloon malfunction and not deflate in the final uh, post dilation. The patient is a 55 year old woman uh, who was pretty healthy other than a COVID-19 infection about a month ago. She presented with about 12 hours of worsening chest pain, uh, which she tried uh, ignoring at first. Um, ECG showed lateral ST elevations and the STEMI team was called in from the field. On cath, her RCA was normal and her LED had only mild disease. The obvious culprit is the CERC, uh, which is 100% occluded proximally and had some dye staining. And um, it was actually a bear to wire, uh, probably because of partial organization of the thrombus. Uh, she had waited uh, 12 hours before coming in. Uh, neither a BMW nor a Pilot 50 wire would cross. Uh, we eventually crossed with a, a Pilot 50 via a turnpike, but I wasn't completely sure uh, whether we were actually intranuminal until we did a uh, contrast injection through the microcatheter. Uh, we uh, did POBO of the CERC uh, with a two and a half millimeter balloon to reestablish flow. But uh, you can see that there is a large OM that had a big clot right at its ostium. And unfortunately for us, that OM took off with a reverse turn uh, from the CERC. Um, I tried to wire it with a pro water with various tip shapes, but uh, could not get in. I next tried a Pilot 50 and a turnpike. Uh, but uh, was not successful. I even tried to hook the OM backwards uh, with a um, hairpin tip, but still couldn't get it. I uh, did not have enough uh, forward pushability to get the wire through the uh, thrombus at the ostium. Uh, finally, I, I reached for my new best friend, a, a dual lumen catheter. Uh, we had a twin pass on hand. Uh, with a twin pass uh, over the circ wire, I was actually able to wire the OM on the first attempt with just the pro water uh, through the side port. Uh, it's a really useful tool uh, to have in a pinch. Uh, once it was wired, I did uh, aspiration thrombectomy in the OM uh, because of the um, heavy uh, thrombus burden. So um, here we are uh, after uh, aspiration thrombectomy. Uh, we have flow back in the circ and the OM, but as you can see, uh, we're dealing with a true Medina 111 uh, bifurcation lesion, uh, which was still filled with thrombus. So uh, what should be our strategy now? Uh, more aspiration, angiojet, balloon, just stent the thing. And if so, which branch uh, to stent first? Well, I considered just stenting, uh, but given all the thrombus, I was worrying that stenting the first branch would cause the other branch to either occlude or no reflow. So I decided to uh, balloon some more. Uh, we did kissing angioplasty with the 2.25 uh, compliant balloons in both branches, and a relatively low pressure uh, to try to limit uh, thrombus embolization. And unfortunately, that did not make uh, things any better. Now, thrombus ended up uh, embolizing anyway. Uh, we had poor reflow, and the uh, ST segments uh, went uh, back up. So I decided to try to aspirate some more of the clot, and uh, we uh, infused uh, intracoronary nipride, 100 micrograms, to try to improve the flow. This really has become a favorite drug of mine for uh, no reflow. Uh, I did a recent video on this. Nipride usually works quite well, especially if it's given distally uh, using a microcatheter or even a, a thrombectomy catheter. Uh, but if you reuse uh, your thrombectomy catheter, obviously make sure that you clean it really well. So uh, flow did get a little better, but still far from uh, ideal. All right, so let's just stent this thing already. Uh, both branches are substantial in size, so which one do you do first? Well, um, if you're thinking that both branches uh, might need to be stented, my general principle is to stent the more angulated vessel first. This is because the straighter vessel is going to be much easier to rewire after it's jailed by your new stent. So here, uh, we stented the circ into the OM with a 3O by 33 millimeter DES. Uh, the OM was easily the more angulated vessel here. And remember, we had a tough time wiring it even without a new stent uh, jailing it. And after stenting, the OM looks better, but uh, not surprisingly, thrombus shifted into the circ and there was now sluggish flow in the circ. Uh, we uh, needed to rewire the circ and now we're really glad that it is the straighter vessel. 
So I normally recommend post dilating the first stent very well uh, before attempting to recross with a new wire. Uh, this reduces the probability that your new wire could pass underneath the first stent and cause all sorts of problems. But here, um, I was concerned that there was still a lot of thrombus and that aggressive post dilation will dislodge more of the thrombus and lead to more uh, no reflow. So I just decided to wire the circ without post dilating. And sometimes using a microcatheter helps uh, prevent you um, from getting underneath the first stent. Uh, a small wire tip and fast rotation of the wire with your fingertips uh, also help. So, but here, fortunately, I got back into the circ pretty easily. Uh, we did uh, more kissing balloon angioplasty, uh, now with a 30 millimeter balloon in the OM and a 225 millimeter balloon in the circ. And uh, finally, uh, after that, uh, both the CERC and OM start to look uh, pretty good. Uh, we uh, did IVIS uh, to get out of Dodge and uh, see how much uh, post dilating uh, we need to do. And the IVIS showed that the proximal portion of the stent still had some room to expand. Uh, so we did post dilation uh, with a 4.0 millimeter uh, NC balloon. And of course, uh, after post dilating, uh, we had more thrombus uh, shifting into the circ. Uh, I had a guide liner down there to infuse intracoronary nipride, pride, but as you can see, the circ definitely appears pinched and flow uh, wasn't quite uh, Timmy 3. So uh, we decided to just stent the circ and be done. Uh, it looked uh, relatively well suited for tap or T in protrusion. The, uh, bifur uh, the bifurcation angle was quite large, uh, more than 60 degrees, and the circ wasn't tremendously big. I am a big fan of tap uh, for bifurcations. It's easy, it works pretty well. Um, I did a couple of videos on tap that you may uh, want to check out. So anyway, we are carefully lined up and deployed a 275 by 28 millimeter DES uh, in the circ. And uh, we uh, did a uh, final uh, kissing balloon, uh, balloon angioplasty and uh, we're almost home free. Uh, and finally, we did a pot uh, with a uh, 40 uh, by eight millimeter NC balloon. And all we had to do now is take a final shot and uh, we're done. So uh, the pot balloon went up for 30 seconds, but then it would not come down. Uh, I asked the tech again, balloon down. Uh, still, the balloon would not come down. The balloon is not deflating. The uh, ST segments uh, go back up and they go way up. Uh, the patient started groaning and uh, she's telling you, doctor, uh, I am having chest pain. Uh, what do you do now? So uh, this kind of balloon malfunction is extremely rare and um, you have to get it fixed very quickly. Uh, the first thing to do is to try again with a new inflator and stopcock. Uh, this is because, especially after a long case, uh, your old inflator and stopcock could have developed micro cracks and leaks that could be preventing sufficient vacuum from forming uh, to draw out contrast uh, from the balloon. Step two, if um, switching to a new inflator and stopcock doesn't work, uh, the second thing to try is to dilute the contrast in the inflated balloon with saline. Um, you do this by using pure saline in the inflator, inflating the balloon uh, more uh, using the saline and aspirating back. Uh, you might need to repeat the cycle sev uh, several times. The rationale here is that there could be a kink in the balloon catheter shaft that's blocking the contrast in the balloon from coming out. Contrast is very viscous, so if you're able to dilute it with saline, the diluted uh, contrast uh, may have an easier time uh, getting past the kink and allowing the balloon to deflate. Um, if using uh, saline doesn't work, uh, the next step is to try to rupture the balloon. Um, the simplest way to do this is to rupture the balloon by inflating the balloon well beyond burst pressure. Uh, generally, more than 30 atmospheres uh, will be needed. And remember to have a covered stent ready in case balloon rupture causes a perforation in the vessel. Uh, but of course, um, this method assumes that the balloon shaft is not so kinked or defective that you're still able to infuse fluid uh, into the balloon. But what if you can't even infuse fluid into the balloon? What if your, or, or what if your uh, inflator uh, cannot achieve high enough pressures uh, to rupture the balloon? 
Well, then you have to resort to using a stiff wire to physically puncture uh, the balloon. But how do you do this as safely as possible? You certainly don't want to have to deal with a uh, wire perforation on, on top of everything. So um, here are a couple of techniques to puncture an in, uh, inflated coronary balloon as safely as possible. Uh, the first technique, uh, which is useful if your balloon is proximal uh, in the vessel, is to use a guide liner. Um, you have to first cut the shaft of, your non, uh, of the non-deflating balloon and then advance your guide liner over the cut balloon shaft into the vessel. Uh, you, uh, you advance the guide liner all the way in and wedge it against the non-deflating balloon and pass your stiff wires uh, via the guide liner uh, to puncture the balloon. The idea here is that the guide liner will help shield the coronary uh, from accidentally being punctured by your sharp wires. Uh, I suggest trying first uh, uh, using heavy CTO wires, such as the Confiazan Pro 12, the Hornet 14, the Estato 40, or, or uh, peripheral wires. If none of these work, uh, then try the back end uh, of the coronary wire, uh, which is uh, usually quite sharp. If the non-deflating balloon is too distal for a guide liner, uh, then you can use an over-the-wire balloon. Uh, in this technique, uh, you first pass a long body wire to the non-deflating balloon. Um, you then advance an over-the-wire uh, uh, over balloon, uh, which is sized one-to-one -to, -one to the diameter of the vessel, over the body wire and wedge the tip of the over-the-wire balloon against the non-deflating balloon. Uh, you inflate the over-the-wire balloon to nominal pressure and that anchors it in place and pass your heavy wires uh, via that over-the-wire balloon to puncture the non-deflating balloon. Um, wiring uh, via the over-the-wire balloon shields the coronary from accidental puncture, and inflating the over-the-wire balloon helps to center the puncturing wire in the vessel, while, uh, while also providing a strong anchor uh, for the wire puncture. You can also use a microcatheter, but the microcatheter uh, does not give you the option of anchoring unless you trap it uh, by inflating a balloon uh, next to it. Uh, similar techniques are sometimes used uh, for puncturing uh, stiff proximal caps in CTO PCI. Okay, so I tried all of these tricks. Uh, I got a new uh, stopcock and inflator uh, that didn't do anything. I changed the inflator fluid to pure saline and tried to flush the fluid in and out of the inflating balloon. That did not do anything either. I then tried to rupture it. I inflated the balloon to more than 30 atmospheres. We did this several times. The balloon uh, did not rupture. So I decided that I needed to puncture the balloon. And while the circulator was looking for the appropriate over the wire balloon, I, I tried step two again, infusing the, the saline into the balloon and aspirating back. Uh, the balloon stayed inflated, but after a few cycles, it softened just enough for me to be able to pull it uh, gently out of the coronary. And once that happens, thankfully, the ST started uh, coming back down. Uh, but the balloon was still too big uh, to, to fit in the guide, so I just decided to pull everything out into the arm. So now uh, we can uh, breathe a sigh of relief uh, with the balloon pulled out uh, to the wrist. It was still too big to fit into the sheath. Um, I could have just pulled the whole thing out, but I did not want to lose access because for all we knew, we could have just completely tore up the uh, coronaries. So I decided to puncture the balloon. Uh, here you see the balloon being uh, punctured uh, via microcatheter using the sharp back end of a uh, BMW wire. Uh, the uh, balloon found deflates sufficiently and was uh, successfully uh, removed. We uh, took a shot of the radio artery to make sure it was okay and it looked fine. And um, fortunately, uh, so uh, did the coronary arteries. Uh, the circ and OM both looked quite good, actually, and we were happy with the result. Um, the remainder of her uh, hospital course was uh, thankfully uneventful. The patient did uh, develop a pretty good-sized troponin elevation, uh, but there was fortunately only very mild uh, left ventricular dysfunction. And she went home a couple of days later. All right, uh, take home messages. Um, a, a balloon that doesn't deflate is a very rare and potentially catastrophic uh, complication. It's often due to a defective and sometimes kinked uh, balloon catheter shaft. So if you kink your balloon catheter shaft, 
just call for a new balloon. Um, but if you run into a situation uh, where uh, your balloon uh, fails to deflate, uh, just remember this approach. Step one, uh, try again with a new end inflator and stopcock system. Step two, switch to saline in the inflator, uh, infuse the saline into the balloon to decrease the viscosity of the contrast in the balloon and try deflating again. Repeat this process several times. Step three, try rupturing the balloon by inflating it beyond burst pressure. Usually more than 30 atmospheres will be needed and obviously have a cover stent ready uh, just in case of vessel perforation. And finally, step four, uh, try to puncture the balloon uh, with a stiff wire or the back end of a coronary wire. Uh, remember to use a guy liner or an inflated over the wire balloon uh, to minimize the chance of wire perforation and have a cover stent ready. And finally, if uh, all else fails, uh, you may need uh, mechanical circulatory support and uh, emergency uh, surgical removal. Thank you for watching.